I hope I remember how to do all this shit. What? <laughs> this whole... Been that long? <laughs> all we're doing is talking. I know. I, I mean, the, well, I did use the studio while you guys were Yeah, down. you did. That's I, right. That's I re- funny. We can talk about that later. <laughs> Power and speed. And uh, Tom has finally returned from his overseas. Oh, well, you got to fucking... <sighs> Man, I got to tell you, I work with amateurs. Yeah, you do. Yep. Amateurs. I don't know who turns the sound up on this. <laughs> Tom had the mixer link on. It was about to repeat over the over the microphone, but he God. caught it in time. At least nobody heard you. that you fucked up. Yeah, but you told him anyway. <laughs> yeah. Which you had to. I hear you. Uh, hey, power and speed, 908-751-0211, as if someone will call. And I yeah. do have the phones on already. Yep. I'm ready to go. Yep. And of course, be linking us on Facebook and uh, iTunes. And, you know, it, it's important to note, if you guys get this shit on iTunes, like if that's where you get it from, because I just, I just got this stupid thing from iHeartRadio. Uh-huh. It's like the third time they sent it to me that you're indexable, searchable, and you're on iHeartRadio. Great. I mean, all I did was push a button. Yeah. I don't know how any of this stuff works. So if anybody's finding anything like that, you know, give us a rating there so we know that that's working. Yeah. Because we, we don't really know. It's, it's hard. We can just see the overall numbers per episode and- I'm not going to say this in a in a good way, but you got to spend a lot of money to get the statistics. Yeah, like right. if you're going to really break it down. Yep. Listen, you guys, I enjoy doing this, but I ain't spending fifteen hundred bucks a month no. so I can look yeah. and see who listened from where at what minute. No, don't care. We got Utah. That's all we know. Yeah, we got Utah. We did. We got a bunch of. That's all that matters. Utates. I can't remember what they were called. The Utes. Utes. Uh. So what went on here? Whole lot, whole lot of nothing. When. Well, I was gone for a week. Almost a hurricane. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, almost a hurricane. Nothing showed up. Boy, talk about a fail. Not that we want to talk about the weather, but I mean, what a job. Yeah. <laughs> weather, man. I mean, they fail always. But I they know. still get paid. Yeah, they still get paid. Yeah, it was going to hit Florida. It was going to be a mess. And then apparently it wasn't terrible down there. And it was um, going to hit here. Shore yeah. was going to be gone, yeah. you know, fall off the side of New Jersey yep. and it, nothing. 30 foot waves. Yep. Nothing. I heard 30 foot waves. Oh, the surfers are out We're, there. Were you, yeah, because when you were flying back in. Did you see anything out the window? That was right at the. snoring. That was right at the time that you were flying back in, because didn't you come in Saturday? Yeah, Saturday morning. No, I was down the shore. I I went down to Cape May, like I told you, um, Saturday night. Okay. And, you know, they basically scared everybody off the island. It was empty for, for a Labor Day weekend. It was crazy. And nothing happened. Literally nothing. Big waves or anything? I mean, it was a little rough. Yeah. You know, barely. Bunch you know, of might have been four foot waves instead of three foot. Yeah, some of them look pretty good on the news, but yeah, you know, the the the, the weather guys on the news they get in their waterproof whatever, and they got some guy behind the cameraman with a bucket throwing water on them, <laughs> saying, "Oh, it's horrible. It's going to be terrible. Houses are going to be washed away." Th- this is going to sound a little fucked up, but I you don't I need to use the f word. Sure, I can. Okay, it's my, my I'd say whatever it's I want. It's his podcast, so that's true. Um, I enjoy an aggressive horrible storm whether it's snow okay to a to a point okay they don't have to happen every day uh-huh. but like to me and this must go back to my antisocial tendencies again you antisocial a little bit a little bit when when it snows or rains or something is so bad that the world like has to stop that is the most awesome time in the world there's nobody on the roads there's nobody around it's, oh, but you're saying you go out in it. Oh, yeah. Not to stay at the house. Oh, yeah. Like no, I'm not staying home. Like, we, we've had a couple not bad storms, but crazy shit here where the roads are flooded. And, like, everybody ran away and scurried yeah. under a rock. And it's yep. just perfect. There's nobody bothering me. Yep. Right. But that might just be me. Hey, Jeff Chang's on. We should we should have him call in and talk about that car, man. He should. And uh, I will formally say, you're a dick. Yeah. <laughs> because I've been talking about one of these for a while. Yeah, you uh, have. Jeff got a new ride, but I'm not going to blow up his spot unless he actually wants to call. Hey, if you want to call, it. hey, do you want to call in? 908-751-0211. <laughs> yeah, he can call. JC. And I'm really, I, I'd like to talk to him about it because that is. Yeah, you were going to buy one. Yeah, not that one because that one really wasn't around then. You know, when I was really, that's how I ended up with the yellow shit box. Oh, he said 10 minutes. Okay. All right, yeah, well, cool. How about good. it, Jeff? We'd yeah. like to talk to you. Um, well, uh, enough about me and my social anxiety. <laughs> where did you go? He said type the number. I was in Dubai. Oh, t- well, you can do well, it. You don't have to yeah. tell me. I know where you were. We're trying to tell the people on the other side of this thing. Hi, people. I was in Dubai. And yeah, no, I, I went for business, you know, with my guys over there. Uh, I actually had to do a couple of training seminars. In two different um, two different spots. One was in Dubai. One was in 
uh, Sharjah, which is another emirate, mm -hmm. kind of down the road from Dubai. And uh, I spent a full week there. It was, I'll tell you, it was unmercifully hot. I've never felt heat like that before. You said it was like walking outside. Into an oven. Into an oven. Like literally, it's it, it, unless you go there, you can't appreciate how hot it is. Really. And funny thing, uh, the, you know, these guys are super into cars. And there's one guy there. Um, he's into old Cadillacs. So one night I was, I well, actually tw two, two nights, uh, getting driven home from one of the guy's houses that we met at basically every night. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you're driving down the road and you see Veyron's and I mean, everybody has a Range Rover. Everybody has a, a G63, you know, that crazy twin turbo Mercedes truck that looks like a shoe. Yeah. Um, they're all kind of crazy cars, anything you could imagine. And I'm getting driven home in a 96 Cadillac Fleetwood <laughs> and it's not show quality. I mean, it's, it's a $3,000 car uh, and the guy loves, and it's awesome. You know, everybody's looking at you. It's just cool. I, I think it's, he thinks it's cool. I think it's cool. Yeah. Probably because it's not seen all the time. Well, no. we, we'd see that and be like, you busted yeah, ass. Yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 But it was very cool. Like, very, who's very driving cool. that tad? Yeah. <laughs> hey now. Hey now. No, it was pretty cool. Uh, and, you know, the guy, he drives around his old caddy, but the day, the, the first day he picked me up, he was out helicopter shopping. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I haven't had time for that yet. Yeah. We'll, I'm, I'm hoping we'll get there. Yeah. We did talk about buying two, right? Two. You have yeah. to buy two. You yeah. can't buy one because we yeah, talked about this. Yeah, because yeah. what if what need, if you need it chase, and, I, and I got it? Need a chase plane what, you know? If, yeah. And not only that, if you ended up coming into that substantial <laughs> quantity of money, um, I'd have to make some of my friends, like you said it, Rich, they got to yeah. be able to stay home too, because yeah. then you'd be home by yourself. Yeah, doing nothing, no doubt. I yeah, I'd love to have a helicopter. What oh. I'd really like is a plane. <laughs> oh yeah, my friend Paul is flying around a a G six fifty. Yeah, what a neat piece that is. Yeah, for that's, some Russian guy, that's major baller. <sighs> my God, it was seventy something million. Whew. But we don't need to. I I don't want to talk about that because when you think about, it, no matter how good you think you've done, somebody's got it better. Yeah, when you look at a plane like that, you don't buy that because you got you know a hundred in the bank. No, <laughs> you you buy that because you have because you got fu in the bank. something with a b in the bank. Yeah. Because you got Trump money in the bank. What? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, his thing was even more than that guy's plane. Yeah. But well, yeah, he's got a seven thirty seven, or no, he's got a fifty seven. I think. Yeah, it might be. Nine, yep. but it's old. I know they last forever, yeah, but it's they old. Do. Oh. I, it's I, still a mo many, many million dollar plane. Yeah, hundred, hundred million. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so the show was there. The thing you went to do was good, and it was all work. Well, I mean, you know, most of it's work, uh, and we did put in hours. We really did. Uh, we we went we went over a lot of his business stuff. Um, trained all his guys. Uh, basically, got up at eight, and we had a, a we had a thing that we did every day. I'm not going to bore everybody with, you know, the nuts and bolts of it, but it was about training. It was about, um, you know, learning the product. And then it was about, um, you know, future products that we're doing. I took back a bunch of samples. We're going to make a bunch of custom stuff. It's just good. It's, it's good business. Hmm. And there, and you know, it was fun. I ate way too much food. So all they do is feed you. You're yeah, an American. Constantly. You should be eating all the time. That's God. what they think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, and, and I was, um, they probably followed Tad's Facebook page and like, this is what these guys like. Yeah. I know. That's the worst thing. Oh, when, I have salads now. So. <laughs> did, yeah, right. Did it cool off at night or was it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, the worst day, um, and everybody thinks it's dry heat over I, Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, yeah. I don't understand that. You told me Negative. it was humid. Well, yeah, I mean, they're, they're on the coast. I yeah. mean, the ocean, if you're in Dubai, the ocean surrounds you. You know, my hotel was a quarter mile from the ocean. Listen, here's the problem. If people don't know this about me yet, if I didn't know because I have a map to look at, I wouldn't even have known where Utah was. It's yeah. that way. I know. <laughs> I don't know where anything is. So it's not here. Yeah. People say, oh, it's in, so it's surrounded by water. So yeah. it's just evaporative. It gets humid. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't unbearably humid every day, but the days it was humid, there was one day it was like in the high eighties percentage of humidity and it was 111. Oof. That's like taking a hot shower. It is. It is. The, the water in the Gulf is in the middle 90s. Oh, that's wow. going to suck to swimming. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how fish live in that. You know, they want to, uh, they want to, you well, know, they sweat. get cooled off. Yeah, I guess they do, right? <laughs> One of these times I'd like to get over there because it's, it's something I'd like to see 
those areas. Well, you should come point. to the custom show. That's what you ought to do. Yeah. That, that's a good time to come. No, it is, dude. And it's, and it's not that I'm cheap, but that amount of money just to fly there to go, you know. Well, we got to talk about that because there's a new deal. New deal? Yeah. Okay. All right. Not bad. Private okay. deal? I can't talk about it amongst other people. Or people's. the lower decks with the. Uh, no, no, no. Civilians. No, it's all, it's, it's baller stuff that we just found. Okay. Yeah. Now, ironically, Tad has something today. I do? Yes. Okay. What did you find? You were all excited about this. Please don't even tell me this is going to be. You forgot already. You know what? Why don't I think about it? <laughs> you know, I, I, I was tempted to give you the proverbial pink slip. Ooh, proverbial. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not my yeah. marble mouth today. You blew that one. I'm thinking about it. Do you know that, like, we all talk about being car guys and everything? A real pink slip. A real pink slip. Ooh. Like, not just on his permanent record. No, like out of here. Wow. Th- this would get his card revoked. He went on what and card. On, uh, well, his man card. Wow. Huh? He went or his car guy card. He went on and on. What did you drive in that you were uber impressed with that you kept <sighs> raving about? Please, please tell our oh, audience that thinks we're hardcore car guys what you were so impressed by. A Prius. <laughs> I would be so politically really? incorrect right now. What is wrong with you? It wasn't mine, but you know. Listen, I'm going to, instead, I thought better of it. I know you had a head injury, so I'm giving you a warning. A pass? I don't want to talk about golf carts, none of this shit, okay? Even the Tesla gets a mild pass. They are pretty cool. They are pretty cool. They're good looking. But Prius, dude? Oh, looks, I don't know if they're good looking, but. Dude, you were in a Prius. Man, we're gonna man. and he went on it was beautiful it was so quiet it no that's was why so i looked nice. it was quiet I, he he i i don't even know what happened to him it's like know. jill stein jumped in his body <laughs> <laughs> what, what what how did this occasion come up that you were in a what, prius uh, my friend from a car dealer's got one we're we went out to a banger you, pa you have a banger yeah banger <laughs> um so you you have a friend that has a prius yep wow all right enough said yeah, I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna touch yeah, that one either. That, yeah, but Tad actually did some research. Shut his mic off. And and he found something <laughs> that I thought was pretty interesting, and it brings me to a story from the old days. <laughs> I remember. Uh-oh. I remember somebody looking for money to do something like this. Really? Yeah. So just go ahead, Tad. Go. Well, no, I, was, I posted it on the Facebook page so anybody else could see it. Our Facebook page about the turbulent, or let's get this right, turbulent jet ignition which replaces a spark plug with a turbulent jet i'm gonna help you along todd yes where'd you find this on engine labs okay posted. our friends at engine labs yes. good place to go sure enginelabs.com and the first advertisement is a manly advertisement nice there, so. hey. nice they've got totally. all kinds of neat stuff and there's there's almost always something to be learned by stopping there so go ahead cletus continue but anyway this came up around on the uh now that they're the V6 turbo era and they're trying to figure out a way to more efficiently start combustion, not just a spark plug, but you're not allowed that according to F1 rules, you have to use a spark plug. What? Okay. No, you can't be direct injected. Well, no, you I can't be that, say that So they're not, no direct injection. No direct injection. You can't use any, uh. But the it, fact that they have to use a spark plug would lead me to think that they must also have a way to make a gasoline engine run like a diesel. Right. So you can't use glow plug and you can't use magic. No, not yet, but. <laughs> no magic? Well, that's coming probably. See if you mm. could try to explain how this thing works. Cause I honestly have not read mm. the article yet. Well, if <laughs> anybody knows how, well, it doesn't work like a fuel injection or like a diesel. <laughs> it does and it doesn't. You pull the spark plug from where it used to sit. You'd make a small chamber that the spark plug sits in. Wait, wait, wait. Where's the chamber? In the head? I think no. it isn't it included in this injector thing. Yes. Okay, go. Anyway, well, you you inject ninety eight percent of your fuel standard through the intake man through the uh, intake manifold. Yep. Then the next two percent or three percent, it depends. They change it up in this bit, is injected into a pre combustion chamber with a spark plug and injector in it. Inside screws, this injector that thing. screws into the spark plug hole. Yep. And then there's about four to eight sp- holes. And the injector, so when the, the fuel is injected and burnt, it sprays it out to the point that it can reach the outside uh, cylinder walls and make a much faster, complete combustion, com- uh, excuse me, complete combustion, which makes the, the car more efficient, 
Because they're, more, they're more power, more power. Well, they're limited in the amount of fuel they're allowed to use in Formula One, right? And the amount of flow, the the injector pressure, all that stuff. So, and I'm curious because they don't explain it in here how they can get that much fuel or air pressure or what pressure to oh. inject the fuel while the combustion is going. That's where the magic comes in. That's where the magic. And I don't. I don't, don't talk about. I don't. That. I would disagree. I don't think it's injecting. It's not lighting before the fuel. It looks like that charge is kind of like a precharge. So your pressure of combustion must load that pre-chamber. So when they spark in the pre-chamber, it directs, for lack of a better term, like probably jets yeah, to go light the farthest perimeters of the cylinder. Right. But still, you have to have, you're doing that at the, well, not peak, peak efficiency at the, or peak uh, pressure at that point. Well, look, we, we know that a diesel works because they're always running lean best unless you're overfueling right. them. You know, they, that's yeah. how they work. Yep. The, so if you put more fuel in, if it can use it efficiently, it will go faster and make more power. It sounds to me like the main reason for this is to have better control of the burn so they can probably use. Well, know, that would be in a lean burn too. Yeah. It, it actually sounds pretty neat. So who uses this? I mean, wh- wh- where is it, where is it being used? Right now, Mercedes was using it. Ferrari caught on to it. Ferrari. In, in F1? Formula One. That's it. That's it that I know of, according to this article. So they can't, so, uh, it's probably too cost prohibitive to uh, get into the pass car deal. That, that's what I'd assume, but. Yeah, but all this shit runs downhill. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, I mean, once, once it comes out enough and more But it's people old technology, it, but, isn't it? Like semi-old, it's not, like how old is it? I didn't even read up. Wait a minute. Uh, are we talking about this and it was something from like 10 years ago that Tad just happened to find? I don't know. Or did well, they just uncover no, no, the No, no, no. I don't, I, I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't insinuating that. That's why I put the article on the page so everybody can investigate it for themselves. But <laughs> Got it. I'm not the school teacher here, but <laughs> no shit. I just found it. Anyway, no, if, if it was before, I don't know where it was. I have the most important question about this yes. for you. Yes. Is there any chance it would make the racing any better than the a boring pile of shit that it really? is really right that's we... what it is that's where it's at right now that's when it was introduced with the v6s and the turbos oh so so you know that this is relatively new yeah because when did the v6s and turbos start that was that just this year that they just started with or this last, last year. year last year that's pretty good they, they, but for, a lot of people must have talked about this shit or they wouldn't have it on engine labs right you know i don't think engine labs is sneaking into mclaren you know to <laughs> to, to get an interview well, well i might have you never know but probably not probably not Engine, engine. Well, that was that's good information, uh, and you said it's on our Facebook page, right? People, yes, can look I posted it on our Facebook page, so we can all you can all come there, and like our page, yeah. and check it out. Well, it's interesting, Tad. Yes, good job. Okay, you actually yeah. found something. That no, was good. Do yeah, I get was... to keep? Do I get to keep my man card? <laughs> yeah, you can keep it. You can keep it. We got oh. a caller. Yep. I don't know who this guy is. Might be a dud. No, that's JC. What? It's Jeff Chang. Where's he from? California. Why does that say there? That's secret. Come on, Not man! Don't blow, his, don't blow his cover. I didn't say where. Okay, good. I didn't say he was in Utah. All right, hang on, Jeff. What's up? You suck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know I do. I really do. Would you like to tell the listeners why Mike is extremely jealous of you? Would I like to tell them what? It, why I'm extremely jealous of you right about now? Tell them what you bought. Uh, McLaren 650s. Yeah, you suck. <laughs> so how badass is that thing, man? I know you told me today that it's it's crazy, but uh, tell tell us about it. It's pretty bad. Uh, I went and test drove a bunch of exotics, and that one, hands down, beat all of them. Now, if it was all wheel drive, it's the only thing that could have made that car better. Oh, it's only it's rear wheel yeah. only. On the wonder, Mike likes it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're rear wheel. But like what everybody has ever said about the ones now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I do still keep up on it. The earlier, you know, MP4s, they had an active suspension, the 570, which would be the economical model of, yeah. of the supercar. Um, they went to a conventional spring and shock suspension and the 650, I believe, has the entire active suspension. So everything I've heard is that the things ride. It's not possible for it to handle as well as it does. And it rides the way it does. Yeah, it rides great and got three different settings. I haven't been ballsy enough to put it in the track setting because it turns off the traction control. Ooh, that's going to be fun. You haven't been ballsy enough? 
Not yet. Not with something that costs that much money. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, for, <laughs> I forgot about that. That's another component that you have to add to it. Now, how is it for mannerisms to, like, drive around, like, pull away from a traffic light? Like, how is the trans strategy in the thing? Is it pretty good? It's great. So that was the big difference between why I went to the McLaren instead of the Lamborghini. Uh, the Gallardo transmission was just brutal. It felt like you would break your neck every time you shifted. Uh, the new Huracan is a little bit better, but, you know, it's still is nowhere near as mannered as the McLaren is. The McLaren, you can leave it in automatic mode, and it drives like a Prius? automatic car. That's what everybody said about them, that they are, that, like, one of the things that people complained about them is that they're too uneventful. Like, they do everything so well that there might be a level of excitement missing from them. But, I mean, to me, that's precision. I think that's awesome. Yeah. That doesn't bother me a bit. Yeah, so if you compare it to, like, an R8 where they tuned it down version of a Gallardo, it's a little bit like that, but it's still pretty exciting when you launch it out of first gear and pull it through all the gears. It is intense. It doesn't shift as hard, but, you know, if it did, it'd probably start breaking parts. Well, you said it's, I mean, you told me that it's as fast as your STI. I mean, you think it really is that fast? I mean... Supposedly, it runs a low 10 quarter, so... Oh, wow. Now, what does that thing make for power, Jeff? Uh, it makes 641. Okay. Are you driving it now, you fucker? <laughs> no. Nah, I oh. drove it to Vegas over the weekend, so that tells you how... Oh, oh wow. It is. I bet some of those roads were great. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. On, on the way back, it was. On the way there, it took seven hours sitting in traffic. Oh, <sighs> I bet you traffic. Yeah, but everybody got to look yeah, at yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, traffic, dick. Traffic is probably not that bad in that car. Ah, uh, I don't like it this really guy. Isn't, but you get the attention of the Mexicans. No offense. It, oh my god! Right off the political rails again. What did they do? Kid, what they were chasing you, trying to wash the car or something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come no. on. What, Tad? You can't talk like that, dude. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Uh, yeah. Well, no. Jeff, that's... I didn't validate the car. I put it in the garage and then, like, come back the next day to check it on it. You can see all these fingerprints on the windows from where people are trying to look inside. Oh, really? <laughs> windows are tinted. <laughs> like, don't touch the car. Yeah, that's... <laughs> that's... Yeah, you know, I never thought about that. Like, I valet shit all the time in Las Vegas and never thought about it, but I don't know how good I'd feel handing something like that over, yeah. you know, to a, to a, a parking attendant It'd be in like Vegas. like one of the movies, all of a sudden the guy just t- goes out the back door, you know, goes down the script. Well, see, what I do, cause, I mean, because, like, you know, you learn the racket. You're I'm from New Jersey, so you learn the racket. Yeah. You learn the game. So I go there, and the first time I figure out who the main guys are that are always around a valet thing, yep. and I take care of them really seriously yeah. and then they always put the car like right there yeah and that was even for my busted ass rented cadillac so with jeff's thing he might as well walk in and hand him 100 bucks say listen i want a perimeter fence i want you know landmines yeah. whatever yeah. i want yeah. everybody away yeah. from lasers it. man you suck chris is asking why he's only yeah. off there well he's it's, it's rumored that he's gonna let me drive it next week no i'll let you drive it i know you will i appreciate that man you both suck <laughs> yeah it's under warranty, so no. Oh, that's break. that's the other nice thing, Jeff. What's a the warranty. warranty on a McLaren? How long is it? Three years, unlimited miles. Nice. Wow. How about that shit? That's pretty cool. What's a Lamborghini warranty? <laughs> you drive it out the door? Uh, I think it's the same. Really? Really? Then they upped it because it was it was three. No, it was two years, and I think twelve thousand total was what it used. That this is going back when I was looking at you know the MP4. Yeah. Yeah, it was terrible. And I'm like, ooh. I was like, you're breaking it. But, I mean, they, they want you to drive the thing. Jeff, what else did you drive? You drove the R8? I drove an R8. I drove a Gallardo Super Laga. I drove a new Huracan. I drove an Aventador. So, the only car I wanted to drive but I couldn't was a 488. Mm. Just couldn't find one? But... No, nah, they're real stuck up at the Ferrari dealership. So. <laughs> really? That plus it's a hundred thousand more used. Oh my god! Oof. Yeah, they're expensive. Lower. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm gonna 
put on my best face about this and say I'm happy for you, and I'm it's nice to talk to somebody that has one. <laughs> but you still suck. I am happy for him. I am happy for him. That's good. Good for him. And it's, he, the five seventy is no slouch, though. I'll tell you that. That's a it's a very good car for what it is. No, and they're actually even more economical. I was surprised at what the pricing was. I mean, they're coming down. Like, look, this is getting to an intersection point that if a Chevrolet Corvette starts to creep up and get a little more expensive and McLaren has some cost-cutting measures, they're going to be pretty close. Really? It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, you can get a new 570S for 200 out the door. Yeah, I'm like nicely equipped. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nicely equipped. Mine, the guy who originally bought it, paid like three twenty five. Yep. Plus taxes and tags. Well, that's what I was telling Tom. Because what happens is, like, they had in canal exhaust. They had all these options, and like, there were like seven different wheel options. And like, the options, it wasn't like, okay, you know, you want a cup holder, it's five hundred bucks. It was like, you know, okay, carbon fiber engine covers, like thirty five hundred more. You know, like the options yeah. were big. Everything. Yeah. So my car had. $60,000 worth of options. Wow. <laughs> it had every piece of carbon you can get on it. The steering wheel was a uh, MSO model. It's a carbon steering wheel. That steering wheel was 4600 bucks alone. My God. Mm-hmm. Do I have to wear special clothes when I drive this thing? <laughs> like, do I have to wear a, like a dinner suit or something? Little white booties on your feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's wild. I, I dress like a hobo and people are looking at me. <laughs> that's awesome though right yeah like did there be not like i would look just like me and i would just get out of the car be like yeah, yeah push the door lock button go into 7-eleven yeah be like yeah no, you'd me. be in the drive through at freaking i Rogers probably <laughs> the- i probably would i probably would well really happy for you jeff and i'm not gonna lie what swayed it the most was i mean the doors going up is just fun yeah <laughs> yeah and they go up and forward yeah it ain't a gull wing it's that, a, what they call somerville with the one dihedral they come yeah. out a little, up and forward. Wow. That's sweet. Dihedra. Right. The word of the day. Yeah, yeah. that is. Dihedra. That's a great All word. All the kids man. running after the guy on Main Street, or do it, they, he puts up the doors, they're all like, ah! Now, Jeff, not for nothing, is it weird to get in and out of without the door kind of being where the door is supposed to be? Like, do you like do you have to grab on to anything? I mean, it's kind of, like, it's weird. <laughs> There's probably nothing weird about it, dude. No. It's not as bad as the MP4. The MP4 had that weird-ass swipe thing. To yes. Try to open the doors. Yep. Which would made it damn near impossible to open the doors. These have actual like a push button latch, so it makes it real easy to open the doors. The newer models come with soft close. So you just you just think about it and it closes. Yeah, basically. That's crazy. But I mean, it's pretty easy to tell if it's closed or not because the window goes down slightly, and if it doesn't go all the way back up, then you haven't shut it. If my wife can figure it out, anybody can figure it out. So, oh, that's good. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> you dick. So I, I got to ask, are you going to mess with it? Like, if you looked at, like, maybe bringing a boost up a little, or are you just you going to leave this one alone? He asked Cobb Tuning already if they would do an access port for him. <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. Well, I can already flash it because I have all the tools to flash it, and I already know the Bosch issue pretty well. But the fact that I have to pull the ECU out, which requires, like, taking our part the whole back of the car i don't know if i necessarily want to do that yet yeah yet risk voiding the warranty dude but i mean it came with a sports exhaust which uh, i don't know if that does any good but <laughs> it's a little bit louder dude you should probably leave it alone right well send us i, I think you sent i think you sent tom a picture but send a send a picture over on facebook or something so we got some nice pictures of it so we can all be jealous of you yeah. Will do. That's hey, got trunk space too, which is amazing. Oh, yeah. Does it have a tow hitch? Can you tow the Subaru with it? <laughs> uh, probably good. <laughs> that would be that'd be badass. Well, good for you, Jeff. I'm really glad to hear it. More than anything, I'm glad to hear you like it because at some point, all of a sudden, something like that will show up here. I don't know when it's going to be. I got a couple irons in a fire, and then after they settle down, then I'll I'll do something. Good. Very good. Do it now before they uh, switch to hybrids. Ooh. Yeah, but I mean, I, I'd probably buy a used one. Let somebody else take that. 1,700 miles on it. Yeah. That's a used one. Yeah. In the McLaren world, that's a used one. Yeah. Although I did see some, Jeff, like looking at some of those, uh, you know, websites that list those types of cars. I saw one or two of them that had like 30,000 on them that people actually drove them. 
you know, older ones. They're not not what Jeff has, but like the MP4s, higher mileage ones. I was surprised. Well, remember, Mr. Bean drove his his for how what yeah. fifty thousand or. Well, that's the thing. I would probably drive it. I right. would probably drive it a lot more than I'm supposed to. Mm. So, all right, all right, dude. I, I'll try driving it, but too many miles. Yeah. Well, it, that's one of those things, man. I mean, it's sitting there, and you're like, ooh, and then you drive it, and you look at your odometer, and you're like, fuck. Why? What is that? What's the <laughs> difference? Well, because like when you're trying to keep something nice, it's expensive. And I mean, look, everything gets fucked up. If you're driving around, I mean, yeah. granted, it's probably a lot nicer weather than we have here, but there's always sand. There's gravel. Some dick in front of you swerves off the road and puts a tire off the edge and kicks all kinds of shit up. There's always something going on. Yeah. It's true. really hard to keep anything nice. So, but it's hard to just leave it sit there. Part about it too. I had a full clear bra on like the entire car, including the windshield. So I didn't have to worry about any of that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It still does? Yeah. Like, that, that's awesome. Like a lot of money. Into yeah, it's like the body film cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's great. I'm surprised well, they sold it to me. It's cheap as they sold it to me. Well, good for you. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, when Jeff's bored with it, maybe you could buy that one. Yeah, maybe. At a discount, of course, because you put time on it. <laughs> Valets, like I already heard, it's been abused by a valet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Who knows what they did to it? Thank All right, you. Jeff. Well, thanks for calling, man, and good luck with it. Hey, I'll let you know when I'm out there, dude. All right. See you, buddy. All right, man. Bye. All right. All right. All right. So jealous. Yeah, well, <laughs> that car's badass. I'm sure it is. I can imagine. And I'm going to get to drive it. <laughs> Hopefully you get stuck in the same traffic he did. My my big purchase will probably be, like, the toy-wise, will probably be a Maverick. You know that X3 thing I sent you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that that's a, pretty cool. That's a pretty bit. It's a Maverick side-by-side by Can-Am. I was looking at him today. Every once in a while, I get a you know, bug to start looking at some shit like that. Yeah. And that, that really sucks. It's going to be one of those things that just sits there that you don't drive it a whole hell of a lot. Well, I mean, you could jump the, jump the hump. Yeah. But I mean, how, how many times you yeah, can drive can around a building, drive across the front lawn? Yeah. You know, true. I mean, there's, there's a bunch of places around here you could kind of sneak into like there's fields all behind here and you can actually get all the way back to the river, but it's not that kind of thing. It's not a trail thing. I don't know. You're really, you're really thinking about getting one, though. Yeah, I am. Yeah, well, I really am. Well, it's not like you have to ask anybody for permission, so. No, I don't have to ask anybody for permission no. to spend my money. <laughs> I'm, I'm just fine, and I shall remain that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Um, you can park it in my house. I have no problem with that. Oh, we gonna, are you going to call that guy? Yeah. Should we? Yeah, so the, uh, somebody reached out to us, um, uh, Warren, like, from Busted Knuckle Garage? You're supposed to be looking. I'm supposed to be dialing. Oh. I'm the dial Is guy. Is that how it works? Yeah, it's busted knuckle something or other. <laughs> and he, <laughs> hey, that's close enough, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he, uh, th- they want to do some kind of uh, giveaway promotion with their with their gear, right? Yeah. Something like that. So we'll, I mean, well, get him on the line and, yeah, and see, we'll see, see what he's is. got in mind. He's ringing. Hello? Warren. And I had a lot of experience with this thing to make calls outward with busted knuckles no how to make calls out it's a phone this is warren hi warren mike from power and speed i got tom and tad with us too. hello hey hey how you guys doing good so we got your email today and we certainly like to help our listeners well let's what is he what do you do what like what, what's the deal with busted knuckle it's a great name by the way kind of jealous um what do you guys do kind of kind of dreamt it up. I've been 16 years in business uh, developing this automotive lifestyle brand. I trademarked the name Busted Knuckle Garage back in 98. And I've grown this to, uh, right now we currently have about 150 different products uh, in the lineup, some patented, some proprietary. And most of my product line is actually licensed to third parties. We've we've had some product parked in Pep Boys before and Target and Sears and AutoZone and places like that. We still maintain a website. Uh, but the one thing I'm really pushing, and I really see it for your demographic, is we have a patent on a an assist tool called a magnetic finger. And I just sent you guys a link over with a video about five minutes ago. Hey, Warren, time out. I, I hate to interrupt you, but were you hawking that thing in, at SEMA a couple of years ago? We won we won a new product showcase award with it three years ago, and it's just exploded. Yeah, you gave me a couple of them. I have a couple of them. You know, I yeah, well, great. I I just took an order yesterday from a customer for fourteen thousand of them Oof, over in Europe. They are cool. Company. It's a little finger thing with a magnet on the end. You really? Got it. And it, it's cool it, as hell. In the field, 
Yeah, and you can't drop anything in the mud, dirt, sand, water. Right. Um, I think, yeah. So that's where I'm going. That, that's the, well, I'm glad. We met them. We, yeah, we uh, did. We met them some time ago. Yep. Yeah. See, don't ever, don't ever question me about knowing everybody, man, because <laughs> I know everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyways, it's really taken off, and um, I'm trying to seed the market a little bit before the holidays because it is a great car guy stocking stuffer, and I just thought – Maybe with you guys, I don't know if it, if it doesn't fit, just tell me it doesn't fit, you know. But if you have a trivia con- contest or a fifth caller gets a magnetic finger from Busted Knuckle Garage. Fifth caller? We're happy to get one caller. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Warren, the way this, you know, people, our listeners have been on me. Uh, you know, I've been telling them we're going to get T-shirts. We're going to get T-shirts. And the reality is I've had two people fail at T-shirts, and I've been failing at T-shirt. Uh, so it's it's basically a failure. So to give some stuff away... Um, you're, you're saving my life for at least a little while. <laughs> that means we won't have t-shirts till next year, probably February. No, it's not, well, yeah, it's so close. We might, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, we would, I, I think it'd be cool. We could, we could dream something up to give some stuff away. Yeah. And you know, I don't want to get bankrupted by it, but you know, even if you had one caller per show for a period of time going into the holidays, um, to see the market, all I'd ask for in return is, you know, mention of our website or phone number, and I'll ship it off to these guys, and uh, no charge to you. Yeah. All right. Well, no, we can we can certainly work something. I mean, look for for us. I mean, we've said it before. We're not really looking for advertisers. We're a bunch of goofballs yeah. sitting here doing it, and somehow or another, it's managed to be pretty, widely listened pretty big. To. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we got kind of, a lot of listeners. Yeah. So I mean, we we started this for fun, but I mean, certainly to give something back to the listeners that listen, I think it's great, and it's it's awesome that you know you want to do this. So yeah, we can put something together for sure. All right. Well, that's kind of the short version of, I don't know what else you need to, you know, just mull it over and, um, well, we'll get with you off the air. I mean, we're not going to negotiate the thing on the air because our listeners will, uh, know the nuts and bolts of, of our, our speaking and, you know, negotiating. Sure. Uh, I'm going to try to get a percentage from you. off the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A percent on something that's free. That's that, that'll be good. Well, well it's going to be a big percent though, but <laughs> doesn't that matter? <laughs> I, I mean, while we got him here, let's get a little bit about what, how you got started in this. Like what? Yeah, and what else you have? I mean, I know the finger thing, and it is cool. You know, you're blowing a guy off. He's helping us. You're like, yeah, yeah, we'll get back to you. No, I just <laughs> told him we'll negotiate off the air. I mean, we'll, Dick. you know, we'll figure it out off the air. We want it to be a surprise to our guys, don't we? I know. Well, here I am. I'm ready to give the finger to your cousin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. People want to, you know. That ain't right. But no, this this business started in a strange place. I mean, I know you guys are on the East Coast, but out west here we got a big hole in Arizona called the Grand Canyon. Yeah. And I lived at the bottom of it for twelve years. Um, and it, you know, work release programs are good things, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've always been a car guy. And, and one morning, this is a true story. August of nineteen ninety six, twenty years ago last month, I woke up and sitting on my desk was a drawing of a hand with a wrench and an oil rag, and it said "Busted Knuckle Garage" on it. And I had no idea that I had drawn it in my sleep. And uh, my wife and I talked about it, and uh, without getting too deep on the whole deal, um, I really felt like it was a pretty odd experience. And uh, I spent a year and a half trying to get a trademark on it. And then we spent another year trying to put some product together. And I used to uh, hike out, uh, drive home two hours, and put things in boxes that I was advertising in the Hemmings uh, Motor Magazine, some signs. And we do a nice uh, mechanics hand set for guys. And you know what? Life ain't no dress rehearsal. So after two years of that, I you know mortgaged the house and maxed out the credit cards, and here I am, sixteen years later. So that that's the short version of it. Are you making money at it? Yeah, this this has been a good year. I mean, big planes need long runways. So you know, sixteen years is has been a lot, um, and it's been very very um, challenging. Uh, without going too deep into it, but I've had good days, bad days, going half mad days. But we're still here. The brand's getting some traction. And, uh, you know, I'm committed to it. This is what I'm here for. That's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Yeah. I'm going to support a, uh, a busted knuckle garage t-shirt. Okay. I might, I might even buy one instead of trying to. But you help the guy. Guys. Well, yeah. Instead of trying to con him out of one. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're so, such a nice guy. Well, and I am good at conning people out of stuff. So, I mean, this was just, it just grew organically. It was something you wanted to do and you just pushed it and saw where it went. That that's pretty much it. I you know I mean I worked in gas stations and garages and you know we're we're probably I don't know where we are in age wise but I'll I'll be fifty nine this month and 
you know, that was back in the, the full service days where you, you greeted people and you thanked them for their business. You said hello. You said goodbye. You got their names. You did the best they could. And that was back in the days when we fixed things. We didn't just replace them. You know, we took them apart. And and I guess for some odd reason, I'm, I'm just keeping that alive through this brand. And uh, I'm, I'm good with that. I want to do that. All right. Very cool. You yeah. gonna, you going to be at SEMA again this year? We are. We're going to be in the North Hall. Um, we're going to be in booth number uh, 10,546, and we'll be there with just the magnetic finger. And I've got another, I've got a licensee with um, Busted Knuckle Garage going to be over in the Central Hall uh, with more of our man cave and uh, hard good items, you know, stools and cafe tables and all that kind of stuff. Have you ever thought of private, private labeling them to, uh, I think that's what you came over to us for. Uh, and I'm surprised it wouldn't work out with some some brands that I'm thinking of. It actually has. Will be uh, Matco Trucks will have them on there probably another two months. And I've done 15 private label programs this year alone. Uh, not even automo- Not all of them automotive. Some are for woodworkers. Uh, some are for women who sew and you know work with needles that type of thing. It's yeah. the private label has been good. But what happened, Mike? We had to we had to wait for the patent. You know, we sold it patent pending for years and we were very reluctant to go out private label without that patent protection and now that we have it we've we've really watched it just uh, mushroom that's really cool yeah and the patent side of things is tough because well christ even with china they don't patent who cares yeah you know it'll find its way on amazon and you got to go after them yeah it's, it's tough so yeah. Like, yeah might as well push it and and push it hard i i hell yeah you're absolutely right yeah you're absolutely right but uh yeah, it's 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 been good, and and we've been we're very grateful for it. It's uh, and it's a funny thing how that started. A customer brought me that magnetic finger tool back in 2002, and said, "Hey, you really need to take a look at this." I fell in love with it right away because I used it all freaking weekend. And then I contacted the guy and found out he's just a guy with an idea. He didn't have a patent. He didn't have a business. He works full time doing something else. And I said, you know what, with Busted Knuckle Garage on this, I think it can help market this thing. And, uh, you know, that was 12 years ago, whatever. All right. Well, awesome. Well, listen, we'll uh, we'll figure out how we're going to do something for this, and uh, we'll figure out how we can work together and get your name out there. And, I mean, we'll we'll talk about you hell all the time. That's fine. That's great. Hey, you offhand, you guys don't have an affiliate out here in, in Arizona. Can I pull it up on the internet? Do you stream that I can listen to your program? Well, yeah, yeah and that, that's why that's why it's kind of tough because we're like we joked about people calling. It's kind of it, like this is a podcast, so people listen to it later. But what we decided to do to try to get people interested and you know to to interact, you know, although half of them are failures, nobody ever calls. <laughs> um, we want people to call. So what we do is we put a live link up for a service called Mixler, M I X L R. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. that's so you know like right now we've got like twenty some odd people listening, which is nice. You know, I mean it's it's yeah. better than a sharp stick in the eye. But yeah, that's but I mean you can certainly download all the content and you can always follow us on Mixler. And then you know, it's every generally what we do is every Monday or Tuesday night, depending on how the time falls, um, we'll yeah. we'll go live right around seven o'clock Eastern time. Very good. Very good. Got it. Got it. Well how, how great that we'd actually met. Um <laughs> I know, it's bizarre. <laughs> and we're still talking to each other. I yeah. Mean, that's even better. <laughs> Well, here's what I'll do. I will reach out to you um, sometime tomorrow, the next day, and we'll we'll solidify what we're going to do, what we're going to work out uh, as far as giveaway, and um, you know we'll just bring it up at every you know we'll we'll figure out how often we're going to do it on the show, and uh, we'll work something out. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Have Tom promise you a spot on the t-shirt. See how that works out. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let me prom- promise you that. All right. All right. So uh, I'll give you I'll give you a ring tomorrow. We'll figure some stuff out. Okay, sounds good. All right, man. Good night. See you. Thanks. See you. Take care. Bye-bye. Neat stuff. Yeah, that'll be good. That was, Uh, you know, it's really crazy. I know. Small world, right? Yeah. I mean, and I, I I have a couple of the things still in the packages. I know exactly where they are. They are cool. It's just bizarre. It is bizarre. So, um, let's get back to this. this, What are you going to buy again that you don't need permission to buy? A Maverick. And you're seriously going to do this? Yeah. I'm a, I don't know. I mean, you ought to wait till at least I get back from Sandsport next week. And, oh, that's and, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, Does that's, that coincide with Subi Fest or whatever? <laughs> no, actually, I'm not going to that this year. What? They throw you out? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I actually decided to go to Sandsport okay. instead. Uh, Sounds like it might be more exciting. I'll do Subi Fest every other year. 
Well, and I know you like when I say that. It's, it's just that's so retarded. I know. I know. <laughs> no, I, I, I'll see what you see out there. Um, no, I've been looking at these. Brian bought that RZR 800, mm-hmm. and that was like, it was older school, but back then it was like the shit. And then like two years later, they came up with ones with, instead of like A-arm type suspension, like, you know, real trailing arm suspension. And they all of a sudden went into like much more serious territory. Then Polaris introduced a uh, hundred and get, what was it, 140 horsepower. So these idiots have been going back and forth between Polaris and Can-Am, you know, and then Yamaha jumped into it. And then, you know, I, I just, I have to ask what the fuck is wrong with those guys. You're looking at your competitor just makes a 140 something horsepower yeah. one. And then Can-Am's got a turbocharged one. It makes like 136. So they're playing the game back and forth. And what does Yamaha do? Normally aspirated 115. We'll mm-hmm. show them. Good move. Yeah. But now this thing from Can-Am, now they've taken it away from the side-by-side, which is always kind of what they were, you know, a little boxy yeah. looking. Well, now they like kind of made exactly what I wanted. And what I told Tom, we should be making a fucking dune buggy. Hmm. This thing is pretty badass. Well, and that's what Sand Sport is. Yeah. It's all that. But we talked about, we talked about yeah. all the dirt track guys yeah. right now. And look, those guys right now, I would have to be willing to bet most of them are starving. Yeah. Because the car counts around here suck. I would have to think that if you walked over to one of those chassis shops and say, hey, Nitwits, can you like make- Like or one of those? Sure. Guys? And say, you want to build these things instead and you can actually sell something, they'd probably jump right on it. Why don't we do that? And then you could just transfer power plant stuff from, you know, other things. And people have told me that they've been doing stuff like that for years, like, uh, you know, like the Harley stuff. You know, you buy a chassis and throw a motor in it, you know, that and, and like nothing comes from Harley, but somehow it's a Harley. Jeff yeah. Chang just said we should do McLaren Fest. Yeah. McLaren Fest? Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Jeff, you're the only one in that club, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Dickhead. He's going to keep poking you. Uh Hey, uh, y- you know what we we could do? We we should talk about um, some guests that are coming up. Yeah, why don't we do that? Because, and, because, and you know, this is... We look, realize this is kind of lame, but, it, it, you know, in the summer, it's not easy to get guests. People are always doing something. It, it's, you know, people are busy. Um, I've had a rough time, and it's, it's not... And for, I want to point out, it's not because you don't know people. You knew the guy living at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Yeah. And I really want to get into that. Why was he living at the I don't bottom know. Of, I, I don't know. and hiking out? No, I think that was a metaphor. Yeah. I hope. I hope so. <laughs> or was he a park ranger? Who knows? Ah, uh, oh, there you go, Tad. That's that's a good, good attempt. Yeah, I, I've been on both sides. Maybe so. have C plus. <laughs> yeah, you have. So it, it, you know everybody. But yeah. as of right first, here's what happens. I'm going through it with three people right now who are what I would consider in our area, very high profile guests. Yep. And the guy calls me, I miss him. I call him back. Yep. Uh, life gets in the way. We both forget. Then you reminded me today. Hey, did you call so-and-so? No, I was supposed to send an email to somebody else yep. with show links so they could vet it and make sure that they weren't going to come on here. And we were, you know, advocating for the KKK or anything, Yep. <laughs> you know? So it's, you know, when you're somebody that's a little higher up, you got to be worried about who, what kind of show you go on. So, but it's just life gets in the way and it gets tough. And then again, with the people going on vacation, like summertime, like now, it's tough. It's really tough. Yeah. So well, you did manage to nail some people down. Yeah. Well, next week we got um, that racing channel. Uh, if you guys have seen the, you know, the crazy Mexico videos of street cars racing all over the place, um, yeah. although they are all in Mexico. Um, you know, Lambos, GTRs, Mustangs, everything. These guys are the guys responsible for all that video. Uh, really cool guys. They went to Dubai with us last year, um, to the custom show Emirates and, um, I got to know them. So I don't know if they're both going to come on or if it's just going to be one at a time. Tell me those guys were over there filming the Arab guys. They, they were that do that crazy shit where they're driving down the highway and they just no, start no 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 oh, no the skate no, behind the bus uh, no the car door. not that shit what? well yeah you've seen those idiots yeah. too oh. hanging out of the side of the car yeah. with flip-flops going 100 i don't know what the hell's wrong with those guys but i'm talking about the guys that are driving down the road drifting like, yeah and they start oh, to yeah. drift at like 150 yeah like these guys are nuts and, and some of them end up going in a crowd and exploding people yeah and everybody cheers all, there's only the mustang <laughs> drivers though right no, yeah exactly no they videoed the um the engine battle and they also videoed the guys that ride on two wheels and and i mean they do burnouts on two wheels and it's it, it's it's a lot of fun but it's a lot a lot of crazy yeah so um 
Yeah, they're set for next week. And then we have uh, a commitment from uh, one of the owners of Injector Dynamics. Um, he would have come on in two weeks, but he's got a little, he's got uh, something he's working through. Not, no big deal, but he's committed to come on. It's just a matter of when. Okay. Um, we're going to have Marco from Magnus back on mm-hmm. with another really ho- high profile tuner. Um, he's j- the guy that called you Magnum, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He is. yeah, okay. yeah. He's going to be <laughs> happy checking. about the music. Yeah. I know. Uh, and, and like Jeff, like Jeff Chang just, uh, reminded me, we're going to have somebody, you know, one of the guys from AEM on, uh, but it's going to be easier now. Summer's over. Kids are back to school. Vacationing yeah. is done. So we, you know, I apologize cause I know it's been ki- a little bit lame, but, um, you know, we're doing P- the best. People need to understand that. Like doing the best I can. can't even get you on a phone just to talk to you half That's the time. That's actually true. That's how, how it's been like yeah. right around now. Yeah, and I can't get them texting, so. Yeah, well, I was texting last night. Yeah, well, I mean, it was anyway. It was definitely worth it last night. Guys are horrible. Yeah, we yeah, are. Okay. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Pick it up, my poor friend. Yeah. All right, so we've got guests lined up, so that's good. Yeah, we got an actual product sponsor, which is kind of amazing. That's kind of crazy that somebody searched us out. Yeah, I mean, it's important to note to anybody like listening, we weren't looking for that. No, that just showed up in the email box. Yeah. I just, to be honest with you, I forgot that mail even worked. <laughs> it's just, was that another hater? No, it came to a power and speed podcast email. I don't oh. even know where the guy got it from. I don't even know where it is, but I guess it's still active. Are I, we that good? No, I put all that shit up on the mail server and I don't, I haven't looked at it. I haven't thought about it. And it's, you know, just, Rich is saying we should try to get Brian Tooley and I, you know, I guess we should. Uh, I, I agree, Rich. Um, but yeah, we should. And, you know, I, I wanted to bring up Howard from Redline. You know, he just, uh, they just posted an article. I think it might have been on Engine Lab too. I don't remember, but he just got done with that, that 16 Camaro with the 427. Twin Nitro Nit- Scott's a little bit of a wise ass. And I, I think his, his anti Trump thing is, cause <laughs> I've, I've seen his, I've seen his bullshit. I see you, Scott, you dick. Oh, he used to Google with two <laughs> yeah. O's. Yeah, but there's, that. there was Aunt Trump stuff below. Yeah, I know. I saw yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Fucking wise ass. We'll punch him in the face. Wait till I tell, I'm going to have to tell the people before we leave what I was doing because it was kind of comical. Oh, with that, with yeah. the volunteering, yeah. So got, yeah, that is funny. Um, n- <laughs> shit, now I lost my train of thought because that that's funny. That's funny shit. Um, well, anyway, so get into that. Go ahead, fire away. All right. So, as, as kind of half a joke, because they did sign up some of my friends who would not be happy about this. Yeah, I think we know what friends we're talking about. Yeah. Um, please don't tell your wife and me. I don't want to get yelled at. Um, <laughs> the. I signed up for, to be a Trump volunteer and you know, they said, what do you want to do? And of course there were like a whole bunch of boxes. I'll deploy to a battleground state. I'll make phone calls. I'll do whatever. Um, so I filled out all the shit and then sure enough, I get an email. The time is now we need you, blah, blah, blah. Like you, are you willing to make calls still, you know, follow this link. So I signed up on this thing. It's like you're doing it for Trump. They give you a call list, and dude, it's the funniest fucking thing in the world. They give you like a speech, uh-huh. you know, kind of like "Hello, sir or madam." You know, I mean, like it's it's that funny. Yeah, thing. yeah, and yeah. Of, of course, I blew that shit off. Like as far as what I was supposed to say. Yep. Um, you learn. You call up somebody, be like, "Look, I'm calling from the Trump campaign. I'm not. I'm not donating." Click, I'm like <laughs> dick. You know. So, but these were people I was supposed to call because they were like me, and they said that they would help. So they were volunteers. So I'm not, I'm not calling somebody who's got a Hillary flag, you right. know, at their house. These are people that are Trump people. So I figured, how bad could this get? Well, I got to tell you, some of them were quite comical. Um, I can only say that one person that I called sounded very much like uh, might have been a cast member of Breaking Bad and been out in the <laughs> desert in a motorhome too long. <laughs> wow. Um, him and his wife both talked to me. That was interesting. Um. But this is the funniest thing in the world. I called one guy up, um, Spanish gentleman from New Mexico, and I he was you know willing to help and went through the whole thing. And when I first started the conversation, and I have this, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this out because of course I did it from the studio because oh, I figured course. I could record it and I could have some fun with it to see who was there. Um, this guy he goes, "Yo, man, <laughs> is this for real? You sound like you're on the radio." Because I was, <laughs> yeah. Everything sounds legit. You know, there's a nice gate, compression, everything else. And I explained to him, I said, well, look, I'm d- dude, I do a podcast. I'm making the calls from my studio because it's easier. And he goes, no shit, man. What kind of what kind of podcast? It's all his car stuff. 
Oh man, you talk about low riders. <laughs> I swear to God, I love cars. I love it. So he's actually listening. I don't know if he's in the room, but he 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 took all the shit down. He, I have all this stuff. Rich said he would troll the fuck out of you, and he probably would have. So who? <laughs> Rich. Oh no, he would no. no. Yeah, keep dreaming, Rich. <laughs> Another one, dork. So you're not voting for Don? Oh no, I'm voting for Donald Trump. Oh no, I was I was asking Scott. Yeah, I know who you're voting. For. I'm voting for for Donald, my boy Donald. Tad's even going to vote. We got him registered. Well, he registered, but registered. only through nice. a serious amount of pressure. All right, we can't talk about who's voting for who, can we? No, but it, it's it's funny, and some of the audio <sighs> some of the audio is priceless. And you know, let me just tell you right here that if for whatever reason this particular podcast crosses the ears of anyone that has the ear of Donald Trump or any of the nitwits that run his campaign, sometimes you call people for things like this and you get what? I said, I see you're not voting for the Donald. He said, no, I'm voting for that. <laughs> Great. Yoo-hoo. Well, you know, the speeches won't be too long. Yeah, they won't. Wait, thank you. So uh, there is no way as a volunteer to get in touch with someone who's further up the chain. So you, you have no supervisor. So you could have the most amazing story in the world. And I talked to a guy from Alaska because I picked Alaska. You could pick the state you're going to call. Yeah. And I was doing it at night. Yep. So Alaska was a better time. Yep. Um, the guy had uh, lost people, or I, I can't remember if it was one or two um, family members in the wars. And it, I think it was the Gulf War or whatever. And I mean, he told his story. That's a guy, unless the people that, that volunteer to do this are nitwits, so you don't want to talk to him. But if I ha- heard that story, and I was a campaign managing guy, I was like, yeah. I'd want everybody to hear this story and that I'm voting for Donald Trump because of X, Y, Z. But I, I have a lot of this, and I think I can take out... I wonder how I could do this. We'll pick through it. Yeah, I mean, I think I could take out parts of it, and it wouldn't be wrong to put over. Because, look, everybody knows they're being recorded when you call on one of those recorded things anyway. Sure. Am I supposed to be doing a recording? Probably not. But the, the stories are actually pretty good. So, yeah, I'll, I'll dig some of those out for next week. I think we'd have some fun with that. Jeff did put the, co- the pictures of his car up on the website, and it is badass. Very good. Thing I mean, I've seen Jeff. it before, but man. Well, I put him up. He put, he put him in. Oh, okay. I put him on the page. Crazy. Got to dip off his cool late, huh, Todd? <sighs> I can't afford it, so what the hell? Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, I mean, that's good. So we got guests lined up. Yeah. We we know we've got some stuff going. I have a, a good, a really good fuel injection guy that I got to get tied up. I have a really, really good cam guy. Like, mm-hmm. probably the best cam guy that I think you could probably talk to. I, yep. I, I can't imagine there'd be anybody that'd be more knowledgeable than this guy. So hopefully we can get some of this shit worked out. Even Alan? Even Alan. See, look, look, we're not supposed to mention Alan. Why? We're not supposed to. Is he still crying? No, but listen, I don't, hmm, I don't want to tease him. All right. I don't want to tease him. All right. More than anything, I don't want his wife to come over here and beat me up. No. <laughs> she, could, she could take you? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. Well, look, I, I think it was good considering we didn't really have much of nothing going into today. Yeah. Sorry about that. Nah, that's all right. We'll ne- get better. Next week will be good. But, uh, hey, we got a sponsor. And, uh, that's right. We must be doing something right. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Not from here. Go McLaren. Yep. Yeah. See you next time.